Good morning. My name is Roy Adrek, and I'm going to be this morning your facilitator for the Wilson County Library Seminar. We're going to be covering today lesson number three, part two. Uh, let me give you a little brief of what we're going to be covering this morning on lesson number three. Number one, we're going to use the Zoom stock and we're going to be doing a live option trade with the chart's description of how we arrived to this trade and at what point we executed the order and what point we decided to get out of the, of, of the trade. So we're going to give you also a briefing of what to look for in the chart that it guides you uh, to execute the trade. The last video we're going to have in number three is about chart study. That'll be the last part of all the charts for you to study from. If you need any material, you're welcome to write to us at Floresville Library, I mean, at Floresville Library or Floresville 2018 at yahoo.com that we will show you in the video. And we're going to start with the introduction to option. So a lot of students request option trading, they love options, they want to know what options are. And we're going to start covering now from chart reading and interpretation to uh, option trades. So with that, I'm going to see you on the other side. Take care. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Roy Greg, and we're going to be I'm going to be your facilitator for the online investment seminar this morning. And we're going to be as usual from the online investor seminar from the public library in Floresville. As you all know, and I mentioned before, if you need any information or any questions, you can contact me at floresville2018 at yahoo.com. And if you need any registration, for the internet, you can register at the Public Library channel code access. Right now, if you go to the Public Library, you'll be able to see the videos oh, with no problem, but in the event that you will need to have one, you can call them at this telephone number, 830-393-7361, and you'll be able to gain access to this course. So we're gonna do today, lesson three, part two. So with that, we're going to continue and see how it goes. Okay, good morning, folks. We are now at the library and we're ready to start a seminar. We got quite a few students this morning. And with that, we're going to go ahead and proceed. So our first trade today is going to be a live trade based on a stock Zoom which include an option, okay? So they're gonna become, we're gonna transition from options to, uh, from the stock chart into, uh, into the options trade. So this morning, uh, we had I executed 10 contracts for an option on Zoom. The symbol is ZM. Uh, the stock is already up $15.70. This is a margin trade, and this is for January 22nd, 2021, and the strike price of the stock is $372.50, so we happen to be in the money by one penny. Uh, this is a market order, and we're going to go over this as usual. Market order is when you sell, and when you buy, you pay the S price, and when you sell, you get the bet price. So with that in mind, uh, what we do here to sake of time, we have superimposed a picture on the trade. They is already begin earlier, and uh, this is to place an order. So we can, in this case, sell. This is what we're planning to do, sell to close, but we have not executed that yet. So right now, the option is $193 up. So we're going to check on the chart, and as you see, uh, 
we're going to make a move over here. The stock had been moving this morning. This is the right date, you know, uh, January the 13th, 2021. And uh, we got one drop here. It's a 70 and just a 75 that we saw here, 75.1. And uh, it had rise already to $2 more. So now we are 18.83. This indicators here in the chart that are uh, on the preview of the presentation, we're going to combine it with the trade. In order to execute this trade, you need to have a chart that you're going to use guided. It's uh, going to be set for five minutes. For five minutes. Oh, this is a 10 minute chart. I'm sorry. And if for soon, and we're using the PPO and the TSI as our indicator. We use this guideline here to determine if we're going to get in the bed or not. So yesterday, the day before, this is three days here. This is oh, one day, two days, three days. I think we got about four days in here. And this is the opening of the previous day. It was yesterday, day before yesterday and so on. So now, yesterday about midday, the price they started moving and eventually got this high about 350 something. This morning when the market opened, it opened much higher and then it dropped down to here and then it starts scaling back and this is when we start taking the consideration of getting involved. So we're somewhere in here that way we bought the options. Now we're going to see the other one and guess what? As we go to the check here, now the option had gained in value $793. So now we're making some money. Uh, the option that we bought, it was a 16,000. So again, same thing is a margin trade. Uh, it's of, we're going to have this in here, you know, 1570, the option 372. And further down in here be the order to sell. So we order to sell is the same thing. This number here don't got to move for the simple reason there is no way to refresh it. But we want to have the order ready to sell. So let's see how we go here. We go back again and go to the other slide and guess what happened? The price is now the stock is up $1,000.93. Okay, so this is a good trade. We are profitable now and we're probably about 10 minutes into the trade. The trade continue the same, 1093 The price has not moved. We don't execute the order yet. So right here we look at it and say, wow, we started with this drop and this is where we are now. We're moving even higher. See, so the price is much higher now. We a little bit higher, 375, and we're gonna see what come up in here. Uh, it's still holding in there. You haven't moved anymore. The prices are the the indicators are still uh, wide open. Uh, this is climbing over here. The signal is this little black line here start turning down we're going to get out so we got a better view over here of how wide it is it's a exploded view of this area here uh, there are those indicators like uh, the s p 500 and so on but we're very happy with the fact that we got somewhere in here from the opening and now we have gone 375 or better so let's see how this come up here we got a little tick and notice that now it start turning. So as soon as it turn, we're gonna call this up and notice right here that it's the same thing. We don't like what we see, so we're gonna sell. And there we are. We took the, the trade, it got sold. We bought it for 16 and we said 1575. So therefore, by waiting for the little bar, we make uh, we end up having a loss, right? Because we bought it for 16, and when we sold it, we got 15.79, so we lost $710. So a profitable, profitable trade for being greedy, now we're paying the price. Let's go and see the slides what we're gonna do next. We, is the game is not over yet. So now, it's a 375, and we get back again with 10 contracts over here for 375 remember there was a 375.50 we got back in again at 11.22 in the morning it's uh 11.22 
we get back in again with 10 contract and see what's going to happen here so here we are we got in the trade and now we are up remember we were down 256 dollars uh what we bought it and this is due to the fact that when you buy options the market maker sell it to you a little bit higher what the price is so you start in a negative point so we need to make up the 256 dollars in here and it so happened that now when we check the next slide, hey, we overcome that and now we $143 up. It's looking good. We need to recover the 700 that we lost. We are now up $443. And as you can see now, we have an order ready to go also. So we're getting here sell to order at 375, but we're making money and we don't gonna make a uh, whole lot too long like it happened a while ago and they will lose money. So 15 minutes later, we get back into the trade. And now uh, we are moving with uh, $443 up. We check at Yahoo to see, and guess what? It was 15 before, now we are 1976. This is uh, Yahoo have it by the minute. And we have our, our short set by 10 minutes. So we come and see Yahoo to see what happened with the minute. And this thing update by himself gradually, but just in case, uh, we just rather uh, go and see what happening at the other end with Yahoo. So right now, the, you know, we up, uh, the, the stock is $19 up, but that not mean that we're gonna be $19. Here we are now, we up 1643. So $643, so we very close to break even on the loss. The price keep on moving up. So we've been from this one, we're back in here. We're at this point now and it's over 375 and it's $20.39 for the day. However, remember that the options do no increase in value dollar per dollar as the stock do. So therefore, we move to the next thing and see what happened. Here we go, we went in here. Now we've been moving higher. We are $21.19 up. You already know about this, remember? You don't want, if this thing start getting too close, we're gonna get out. We are at this point here, and we have moved this far now. So we are about 15, 20 minutes into the trade. It's going even higher, and we're gonna see what happened. The price is 21.14. Okay, we got out at 1500, uh, 1543. So we executed the order and sold out. We, we were peaceful enough to know that uh, we had recovered uh, some of, we needed to recover the loss, which is the important thing here. We go back and say, we, so we're six, 643, now we are $1,500 up. And that's why we took the trade. And here it is, you know, 15, 15, 1,543 cents and 14 cents. So it got sold. And uh, now we are in the positive. So let's see how this the trade works out. That we're gonna get here. So here we are now. So let's do the first part. Uh, this is January 13, 2021. And we went in this morning and bought 10 contracts of Zoom. And we paid $16.20, 50 cents. And we sold it for 15.79. So we have a loss. And that loss is $770. You know, this is 11.13, 11 in the morning where we sold, sold this. Now we come over here and uh, at 11.22, you see, we did that at 11.13. Now 11.22, we came in as, uh, one more time and we got out for 11.31. So that was nine minutes. We bought it at 16.35. And we sold it for 18.12. So here's the 18.12, 16.35. So when we deduct the 18.12 minus what we pay for 16.35, it gives us one dollar and seventy-seven cents. Saying there is contract, uh, one thousand contract we may per share dollar seventy-seven multiplied it by one thousand, by one thousand, and we made one thousand seven hundred seventy dollars net profit on this trade. However, as the whole for the day, 
So in $1,700 in nine minutes, we need to take the two trades for the day and deduct the loss here, which is $770. So we actually profited, after all, between 10, 13 minutes or so, we profited $1,000 and that ends the, for the day. So here we are by 10 o'clock or later, you know, we just went in and out of 11.30, 11.31, so that was it. We went in at 11.13, so we went up probably by 11 o'clock, so it's about 29 minutes or so, and uh, we managed to recover this loss and make an extra thousand dollar for the day. So I want you to think about this. If you can execute this order like this, you can make a good income during the year because we we have over 200 days a year that we can trade however i don't want you to trade every day it's a mistake to do that you don't you don't want to do that uh, this is how people get in trouble uh, there's a time to trade and there's a time not to trade and this is where you want to make sure that indicators are in place uh, now we're going to move into options and before we start studying options I want you to be aware of that trading option is not exactly easy. I don't care what anybody tell you, but by experience, I've been doing this for 48 years. So you saw it's a while he make a uh, thousand bucks and uh, in 15 minutes or 30 minutes, that's more than what I get paid a week. Well, that might be true. However, remember I've been doing it for 48 years. So pay attention, very, very close attention of what I have to say about options and what I have to say about stock movement. Options have time values, okay? So we're gonna look at, in a chart here that you pay a premium. Remember, we pay about $1,700 for those options. Well, over here, you're gonna buy one. If one contract, if we buy 10, we have to pay $5,500. But this is one contract, five, five, $550, and it got almost 100 days before it expired. That's two things to consider. This is the premium that you pay, not what you make money with the stock. This is only the premium. And the option theta, that that's what it is, is the extrinsic, extrinsic value of your option. You know, and it changed and it varies as we go down the line. You have to look at it like a, when you buy insurance for your car and they tell you there's a hundred dollars for a month and then at the end of the month, your hundred dollars are gone. Well, the same thing gonna happen here with the $550. By the time of the end of this 90, 100 day, this thing gonna be zero. So your option has to be in the money to compensate you $550 and also have to compensate, you know, and a profit for you to be at. So what happened is that there's 75 days on the trade, there's 75 days less or, or less, about 73 days, the option has lost, a premium has gone down to $450. Uh, don't panic about this. We're gonna describe this more quickly and easy and explain it later in more detail, but we had to start somewhere, okay? So now we come over here and we go halfway through about out of the 100 days, we are over here and then we're halfway through and the option now is worth 350. So you had lost uh, $150, that's actually what happened. Then we come over here in 30 days, only one month to go now before this thing expire. And 30 days later, this option worth about $250. Then we move on to the last five days of trade. This is the last week of trading. It's five days over here. This is your time and this is your price, the option price on the premium. And now five days later, uh, up it, after five days to go, you got $150 value. So you had realized it now that you had lost, you know, 
most the value had gone down to 150 from 550 and now it's five days left so at the end of the day right here when expired that friday the option premium that you pay the only thing going to be left is whatever is in the money if the stock is in the money then this is going to be zero or maybe 15 or 20 cents we're going to another slide that we're going to explain on that so can you trade on expiration date well actually you cannot trade on expiration day i know they say expiration date is friday and um, because technology but actually the expiration day the last the, the last the last day to trade is on friday and the option settles on saturday so that's actually what it is so what is the delta in the option right this is what the, the delta we're going to look into that later what is a delta okay in the option and it's very important but we cannot like leading you into what coming ahead then what market makers do that they don't tell you about it or you might might don't know and uh, the bed and the ask price are expiration so we're going to continue moving in here we're going to take one more slide here okay so here's the same thing we're going to have now one real trade of option that it lasts a month and we're going to say that you pay $500 premium so the $500 premium is going to be in this shape circle this is equal premium so one week go by and you're going to buy an option at 40 but at this time the price is $35 okay so the option whatever it is is $35 you pay $500 and your strike price is at 40. so anything above 40 you're going to make money if you don't reach 40 this 500 dollars is going to be gone remember that i told you to go to zero it will go down to zero so on the first week your option dropped to 475 dollars this is your premium remember and in the second week when it opened on monday you know or june 2020 so here's the eighth of the week and the option is only worth $450 now, okay? But on Tuesday or late Monday, the prices start climbing and by Tuesday it went a little bit more and by Friday at the end of the week it has jumped up $10. So now you are in the money $5. But your option premium, remember this and this, it only weighs worth 400 and now you got five dollars on your option so now you got how much nine hundred dollars five hundred for the option and four hundred for the premium so it's nine hundred dollars this be the right time to sell but we are greedy as usual as human beings is they going to go higher well the following week market open on the 15 on monday and the price don't move any higher than 45 we don't see this line any higher this bar having got weather so the whole week go by and the stock remain at 45 and now by the friday the option got the premium that if you beat 400 now it's 200 you got 500 in the money so now for practice purposes you only got 700 dollars okay so there's, the price don't go up anymore you got 500 so you are to sell here you will make how much you already got 200 left so you're going to make out the 300 that you love from the 500 so you only actually going to make 200 dollars on this this number will have been you sell today will have been 300 500 money you got to make cut make you got to make out the loss that it went for 500 over here to where we are now so here we are in the here we are at the 22nd this is the last week of training on this on this particular thing and the 26th on friday guess what price never went any higher your option is worth only now the premium that you pay the 500 dollars the round corner one that you pay 500 now it worth 25 cents so you got an option here that it worth 500 you sell it you get your $500 and 25 cents but you got to remember 
that you pay 500 for that, uh, you lost your premium, you lost commission, so let's say that's $20 commission on your round trip, so you actually only make, what, $480.25, so you actually lost some money. If you don't execute the order because it was worthless, those 25 cents disappear, and the brokers and the dealers keep that money. So that's 20 cents, they keep it. So Saturday, June 27, everything that comes gets settled, and a Monday morning, the $500 shows up in your account, and then you're going to have the other fees, so you only make about $400 and eighty dollars so this is the beginning of option we're going to see a video about stocks okay uh, this uh, that how to deploy capital and we're going to be watching that so what is an option an option is the right but not the obligation to buy or sell the underlying futures contract at a predetermined price on or before a given future date we make decisions every day for which there are options, such as what shoes to wear or what food to eat. By having multiple pairs of shoes or by having many menu items, you have options. Suppose your company is considering moving to a new city and you may need to move. You could buy a house in the new city just in case, but that may not be the best use of your capital. And if the company decides not to move, then you have a house you don't need. But what if you could buy an option on a house in the new city? You will need to pay the owner for this right. And the cost of this right is called the option premium. If the company moves, you would exercise your option to purchase the house at the predetermined price. If the company does not move, then you would simply not exercise your right or option to buy the house. When this happens, the owner of the house will still keep the option premium. Options on futures work fundamentally the same way but with more standardized terms. And like futures, options permit you to lock in price but with an added layer of flexibility. For example, when you buy an option on a future, you pay an upfront premium and agree to buy that particular futures contract at a specific price. You have the right but not the obligation to exercise your option at that price and receive the futures contract. So if the prices move against you, you have the option of not exercising the contract. Every option transaction must have a buyer and a seller. Buyers pay the premium to the seller. The sellers hold the risk of price movement. What are some of the benefits of options on futures? Options can be used like insurance policies to limit losses on a futures contract. They can also be used for speculative purposes, whether you are selling options to receive premium income or using options to establish a position in a particular commodity, index, or interest rate. As hedging instruments, options can produce offsetting gains in the face of adverse price changes in the cash market. Options permit you to efficiently deploy capital in the form of option premium. In this case, you can participate in the price movements of the underlying asset without having to buy the asset outright. So when it comes to options on futures, both buyers and sellers have an array of choices to efficiently deploy their capital while expressing their opinion or managing their price risk in the marketplace. One of the most universal and widespread technical indicators is known as moving averages. They are used in most trading systems that incorporate trend following indicators because they're extremely easy to plot. Of course, although we don't have to plot anything ourselves, we've got a computer for the humdrum work. It's a good idea to understand how they are calculated because we will then be able to use them more effectively.
So the simple moving average or SMA for short. Let's cast our minds back to our school days and those long arithmetic lessons. No doubt you remember how to calculate the average of a number of values. Take a look at the formula for the SMA. N is a variable and is the number of time periods in the moving average. And C, for close, is an old friend of ours, the closing price. Although other prices can be averaged, for example, the high, the low, or the midpoint between the high and the low, more often than not, it's the closing price that is averaged. So we can see that SMA is simple and that it's an average, but what about the moving? Let's take five bars or candlesticks, whichever you prefer, but we'll take five bars for the sake of simplicity. With these five consecutive bars, we can calculate the first value of our simple moving average. At the beginning of the new day or hour or maybe week, a new closing price will be added to our formula and the last one will drop off at the same time. We've started moving along the price chart. We have selected a variable of five. It may be five days, five hours or five weeks, whatever. It's a relatively small period. The moving average dogs the price chart pretty closely. If we increase the period to 10, for example, then the moving average will look smoother and slower. What I mean is that it will react more slowly and smoothly than the price chart. Compare it with a five period moving average. If you're using SMA as a trend indicator, then the slower SMA is sounder and more reliable. In previous films, we examined support and resistance in the form of straight lines, what we have here are curvilinear support and resistance made up of moving averages. We can use them as trend indicators. When price is higher than the simple moving average, it's an uptrend. And when price is lower than the moving average, it's a downtrend. This uses the commonly cited major drawback of moving averages that they lag behind the price chart to our advantage. But because this average is called simple, it stands to reason there are more complicated averages. Well, first off, my friends, let's remind ourselves that the goal of technical analysis is to forecast future price behavior on the basis of past price behavior. Have you ever heard of a weather forecast based on the statistical data of the amount of snow that fell 10 years ago? It's not likely. Of course research data should take the past into consideration, but it's the current situation that lies at the heart of any forecast. What I mean is, what happened today is more important, it carries more weight than what happened yesterday. And yesterday's events are more important, they have more weight than those of a year ago. And now let's go back to the formula of the 10 day simple moving average. There's a factor of one tenth before each closing price and it's called a weight. In a simple moving average, all the weights are the same, but we want today's price to have the most weight, yesterday's to be a little lighter, the day before yesterday's price to be lighter still and so on. Let's call this a weighted moving average or WMA. Naturally, it incorporates the variable of N and in our case, N equals 10. So what do we do? To start with, we change the factors in our formula to 10, 9, 8, 7 and so on down to 1. The further the price is from today, the less weight it has. We add the finishing touches to this formula by dividing it by the sum of weighting factors. That's it. Now let's see what the formula generates. It's definitely different. Please note that this new moving average has the same number of time periods, 10, but it's faster 
and more sensitive to fluctuations in price. Although the formula is simple, it would be a real chore to do the calculations manually. Fortunately, we have rumours to hand our technical analysis programme and with its help, we just have to select the time period we want in the parameters window. Let me just remind you once more that the greater the value of n is, the slower the moving average is, regardless of what type it is. So, shall we move on? I'd now like to discuss Bollinger Bands. This is an indicator envelope. We select a moving average and the price range is charted around this MA on the basis of a set of rules. So what are these rules? The first rule is to select a moving average with a time parameter N. To be more precise, if we're working with hourly charts, then N should equal 24. That's 24 hours. And if we're working in a daily time frame, then we'll take N to equal 22. That's a month. These are the natural cycles. The second rule defines the width, or the height, of the range D. By adding and subtracting D from the value of the moving average, we get the upper and lower lines of the Bollinger Band. The value of D is determined by the parameter S, which we select ourselves. The range of permitted values for S lies between 0.5 and 3. But before we go any further, let me explain Sigma, the symbol for standard deviation. The Sigma value is a sign of the volatility of market prices. Look, for any time period that you select, let's say 24 hourly bars, we can draw a straight line in such a way that the sum of the deviations of the closing prices from this line is the minimum possible. As this line moves along the chart, its incline will change, as will the minimum sum of its deviations. But most importantly, the incline of this line, and it's called linear regression, and the minimum sum of deviations have a precise value that can be accurately calculated using mathematical formulas on a computer. The minimum sum of the deviations of the close price is the basis of the calculation of sigma, the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is the statistical measurement of price volatility for the period N. Sigma is a factor of the width of the range in the Bollinger range. So let's get back to S. D is the width of the range and is equal to S multiplied by Sigma. To calculate D, we need to know how many bars our sigma is for, and what value of s we've selected. Sigma is calculated for the same period n, which we set for the moving average. If we take s to equal 0.5, then d will look like this. And if we take s as 2.5, then d will equal 2.5 multiplied by sigma, and the Bollinger range will look like this. So, how can we profit from this envelope indicator? Let's work on a daily chart first, with N set at 22 and S at 0.6. If the price breaks the upper line, we get a signal to buy, like this. Can you see the arrow? If the price breaks the lower line, we get a signal to sell. See what it looks like. If the prices are between the upper and lower lines, no trading signals occur. There's some turbulence, and it's a trading range, a sideways movement.
We'll continue looking at the overbought and oversold zones in this examination of a slightly more complex oscillator which also incorporates them in its search for reversal. It was developed many years ago by George Lane. Nevertheless, it's been making something of a comeback recently because of modern technology. What's 20 years between friends? The principle of the stochastic oscillator is based on the tendency that, with a general price rise, closing prices as a rule converge to the upper boundary of the price range. And vice versa, when there is a downtrend on the market, they converge to the lower boundary. Several curves are used in this oscillator. The main curve is called percentage K. Stochastic determines the level of the latest closing price relative to a price range for a certain period of time. This is the indicator's first value, N1. The most widespread period used for this curve is five days, or hours or weeks. The formula of this curve is strikingly simple. Here it is. It helps determine the position of the last closing price in relation to the lowest price L5 and the highest price H5 of the range for a selected period of time. We've chosen five days. The K curve is very sensitive to price change and it spends a lot of its time banging its head on the floor or the ceiling. Which is why we don't feature it in rumours. But if we average it, for example over three days, we get a slower curve. Three days is the second oscillator's time period, N2. We'll call the new curve a slow percentage K line, although it'll be the fastest one on our stochastic chart. And here it is. And after averaging or smoothing the new percentage K line for three more days, we get a percentage D line and the third and last time period N3. We'll chart percentage D as a dotted line on the chart. And that's it. Plotted it at last. So what have we got? Two lines, a slow percentage K and percentage D. In addition to this, we have three time values. N1, five is the customary value, and N2 and N3, they're the smoothing periods. We've set them both at three. And you can play around with them. Your computer will help you again. The K and D curves fluctuate between zero and 100 on the vertical scale. The overbought and oversold zone should be set with signal lines drawn at 30 and 70. And how does this oscillator generate trading signals? At first sight, in the same way as the previous indicator, RSI. 